48 represents 40. The 8 in 48 represents 8. So the simplest way of looking at the three-part math lesson is, is looking at his teaching backwards. Usually we teach a lesson and then get the kids to do the work. In this case, you get the kids to do the work and then you teach the lesson. So I'm teaching a grade 4 or 5 class. We are beginning a unit one edition. We find a variety of mental math strategies in this fabulous resource, a guide to effective instruction in mathematics. The splitting strategy, the adding on strategy, the moving strategy, and the compensation strategy. Have motivation, bring enthusiasm into the class. Activation. Turn your brain on. Get your brain moving. Activation. Power juice for your brain. Learn. Activation. Get your brain smart. Activation. Learn with your brain. I'm going to start by activating your brains, obviously. I'm going to activate the brain each way. You have a piece of paper in front of you. You have a marker. No, I don't have a marker. What I want you to do is with your elbow partner, you are going to look at this number. And I want you to represent this number on your piece of paper in as many different ways as you can. Oh, some of the ways that people represented 18. Expanded form, right? So place values, 10 plus 8. Excellent. People found different ways to add two numbers together to get 18. Some people use base 10 blocks. There were some people put uh, a place value column. Alright, so your brains are now activated. You're thinking about how to break up different numbers, numbers into different uh, in different ways. So here we go to our question, our problem. The problem. The problem. What? The problem. What problem? So here's today's question. Who can read this? That's right, Mr. Wendler's exploring the depths of the caves in his Minecraft game. Mr. Wendler was playing Minecraft. He found 48 pieces of iron and or in his supply chest. He had uh, 26 more. How many pieces of iron ingots uh, will Mr. Wendler be able to make? Now, in order to understand this question, you have to be able to understand Minecraft, or you have to know what iron ingots here are. So, can someone very quickly explain to people who might not know, what does iron ore have to do with an iron ingot? One piece of iron ore equals one iron ingot. Okay. Now, this question is different than the other questions that we've been doing because it's missing a word. What word is it missing in the question? What word is it missing, Isabella? It's missing the word about. Many of the questions that we've been doing have been using the word about. When you use the word about, what are we asking you to do? Do you remember? Round the numbers off. Or... Round the numbers off, that's right. Is this question asking you to round the numbers off? No. No. So this question doesn't want to know about how many pieces of iron ingot there are. It wants to know, as Angelina said, an exact number. What do you need to put on the piece of paper when you're doing a banjo question? Yes. Explanation. Labels. Labels. An, an answer sentence. Show all your computations. Very good. All right, uh, you are working in. No. Purple. Purple groups. Yes. You may begin. We added, I'm making ten uh, blocks, and I'm adding them to equal the answer. Well, um, I decided that I was going to show the all the cubes, the iron ore. I'm putting 48 of them there, and then I'm showing the chest that had 26 more, and I put it on a Mac computer. got the furnace. A Mac the computer. We added 40 plus 20 equals 60, and then 6 plus 8 equals 14. 14 plus 60 equals 74. Okay. So why did you take 40 plus 20? Because that was him who did it. Well, because uh, I, I took away the 8 and the 6. I took away the 8 from the 40 and the uh, 6 from the 20. So that would e equal 40 and 20. And I added that to 60. And then with the 6 and the 8, uh, we added it to 14. Then, uh, then we added 14 to 60 so we could get 
the total number. Awesome. Good job. So, tell me how you how you're answering the question. Um, first, um, I took the 48 and I split it up into four 12s like here mm -hmm. because they are friendly numbers. And then I went over to the 26 and I split it up. Although they were not <laughs> friendly numbers, they were still easy to add. So I added them up it to get the answer as 74. Right, how are you solving this? I broke 26 and 48 to 20 and 40. Yep. Then I added them to 60. Okay. Then I went to uh, 8 and 6. Yep. And they were kind of like hard to figure out. So I, I broke into 5. And then um, it turned to 10. So I went to the 6. And I added 1 because like, you know, 6 plus 1 equals 4. The five plus one equals six, and then I went to uh, I got I got eleven. Then went back to the eight. I added three, got fourteen. Then I crossed out these two numbers. I added fourteen, I got seventy-four. So this is an eight. Yeah. So the five and the three make the eight. Yeah. And the five and the one here make the six. Yeah. And they're easy to use. Yeah. You got to fourteen. Yeah. Got seventy-four. Awesome. I love it. How are you solving this problem? You're adding. How are you adding? Yeah. We are adding 48 plus 26. And how do you do that? We add, well, you first look at the ones place value column, but, but we saw that 8 plus 6 and is higher than 10, and the ones PVC can only go up to 9, so we move the 10 in 14 from this over to here, and then we kept the 4 in the ones place value column. And 4 plus 2 equals and yeah, and one, one plus four plus two equals seven, which giving us a total of seventy-four. Awesome. <laughs> okay, well, I see some numbers. I don't see an explanation yet, but how are you solving the problem? Well, first we took forty-eight and we write it in its span form. Then we took twenty-six, and did it in its span form. Then um, we added up the two tens, which is forty and twenty, and so then we got sixty. And then we added the two ones, and we got fourteen. And then we took the total of the tens that we added, and we put that in expanded form. And then we took the total number of you know, the ones, and then we put that in expanded form. And then we added the tens with the tens, and we got 70. We had the ones with the ones, and we got four. And so then we uh, added the tens plus the ones, and we got 74. How are you solving this problem? So to return 28, to 50, so we added 48. Sorry, 48 into 50 because it's a friendlier number, it's easier to add. So we did 50 plus 26. Yeah, so and then because we added two before, we had to take the our answer that we got 76 and we had to minus two. So the because we added two before, so it's brilliant. All right, write down the answer. We start a new unit today. Uh, we just finished doing our unit on representation of numbers. What kind of things did we talk about when we were talking about representing numbers? Tell me one thing, Noah. Rounding. Rounding off numbers. What else? Place value columns. Place value columns. Good math and ease. Yeah. Good. Decimals? Yes. I was going to say decimals. You were going to be correct. <laughs> consolidation. Okay, so this is consolidation. Now we're going to talk about the work that you did. So, what I've done is I've put up the work, as we always do, into the different ways that people answer the questions. All the people who used pictures are based on blocks together. We have a really interesting strategy that came, over, uh, came out over here. And we have a more traditional strategy that came out over here. But the ideas that I thought were the most interesting today, so what I want to focus our discussion on, is how did these people answer the question? And all of these answers are similar. So here's what I want you to do. I'm going to ask you to turn and talk. And I want you to come up with an explanation as to how are all these answers similar in how they answer the question. Turn and talk. Hello. OK. Who can tell me what's similar about these four pieces of work? Like they all like break up the numbers. Can someone add to that? They all used expanded form and broke the numbers in their expanded form, like forty plus eight and twenty plus six, and then they added them up. You do it in place value column. Ah. Like the four represents forty, which is. 
represents eight, which is in the ones column. Did you hear that one? It's level four. You put them into their expanded form because when you put numbers into their expanded form, they become easy to add. They become friendly numbers. That's a really good way to do math because it allows you to do the work in your head. It's awesome. So here's the last thing we need to do. Uh, this is a strategy that a number of different groups kind of came up with. We need to name this strategy. We need to make this strategy our own strategy, and we all need to give it a try. So we like name this. this strategy. Give me an idea. Expedition. I'm like a boss. Textbooks, anyway. <laughs> How many meters of chain link fence do you need to surround the country of Canada? Before you start the bad <laughs> Why? Yeah. I don't understand the question. Oh, come on. I'm just gonna walk in and then we'll start. <laughs> you know, I'm still rolling. Stop staring at me! <laughs> risk. risk. Why it's important to teach with teach risk. Teach with risk. Make things relevant, inspire them, make it student-led, and make it kinesthetic. Have them do it.